we think that Le Corbusier is um, probably the most influential architect of the 20th century because he not only created a huge uh, amount of buildings as an architect uh, throughout a period of over 60 years, but he also um, was very active as a writer. He wrote more than 35 books. He was an artist uh, as well, uh, a painter as a sculptor. He created a very influential furniture designs, so his importance um, was not only in his building oeuvre, but in his complete work, um, which is much more diverse than the work of many other architects. We tried to show Le Corbusier's work not only as an architectural work, but also to point out um, several aspects of his work which have uh, too long been neglected, as we think. For example, we are showing the very early period of his work that he created in La Chaux de Fonds in Switzerland, where he was born. Um, we are also showing films that Le Corbusier himself turned, because it's not known that he also had a camera and he shot very interesting uh, films. We are showing, for example, a huge uh, mural painting that he created for his own office. So we are trying to uh, show many aspects of his work which should enrich the image that uh, people usually have of Le Corbusier. Usually, if people think of Le Corbusier, they think of the architect of the Villa Savoie or of the Ranchamp Chapel, or they maybe also think about his very provocative uh, urbanistic plans for Paris, his very radical plans of the 1920s. So he was long seen as one of the most yeah, maybe technocratic architects of the 20th century and we want to show that this is uh, not true if you consider his whole work. It's maybe true if you think of Le Corbusier of the 1920s, but considering his whole lifespan and his, all, his whole period of work, we have to say that Le Corbusier was very eclectic, he was very interested in other cultures, he was um, always searching for a very human way of building and conceiving cities and um, the, the things he created in the 1920s, which were his most rationalistic period, are only focusing on one very short period of his whole oeuvre. Showing Le Corbusier's work, um, we thought it is um, reasonable not to show a simple chronology, because um, uh, we suppose that many people already know um, when which building was uh, executed, but we decided to create three groups which um, show the most if, uh, important themes in Le Corbusier's work. The three groups in the exhibition are called Contexts, uh, Publicity and Privacy, and Built Art. In the first group, called Contexts, we are showing um, six very important cities for Le Corbusier that were either places where he was uh, living and working, or places that gave him important inspiration, or places for which he projected or built some of his works. In this group we are showing um, works of La Chaux de Fonds, which was Le Corbusier's uh, hometown in Switzerland. Uh, in this uh, La Chaux de Fonds section we are showing models of his uh, very early buildings. We are showing sketches and drawings that he did when he was traveling as a very young architect. And we are also showing many, many other materials that are showing uh, Le Corbusier's young and very early period. Then Le Corbusier moved um, to Paris, and this is another section in the first group of the exhibition uh, devoted to Paris. Um, there we are showing his urbanistic master plans for Paris. We are showing uh, all the Esprit Nouveau um, issues, um, which was the, the magazine, the newspaper that Le Corbusier founded. <clears throat> but we are also showing Le Corbusier's role in the artistic avant-garde in the Paris of, 19, of the 1920s. Then, in the first group of the exhibition, we are also showing the influence of uh, Rio de Janeiro, of Latin America, and of North Africa, of Algier, especially, on Le Corbusier's work. Le Corbusier traveled to these places at the end of the 1920s, beginning of the 1930s. And um, these travels were crucial because there he rediscovered the organic form, and uh, this made him turn away for the, from the very rationalistic work of the 1920s and um, uh, brought him towards uh, a re-examination of uh, so-called primitive cultures, of archaic forms. He started to collect small natural objects. So he developed 
uh, a new interest in the vernacular, which was um, uh, very inspired by his travels to countries like in, in Latin America or Northern Africa. We are also showing New York, um, which was uh, a very important place for Le Corbusier in the 1930s. He traveled to New York in 1935. And uh, he was inspired by the huge skyscrapers and also projected the um, main uh, head, the headquarter for the United Nations for New York. And we are also showing a, a glance of, uh, on uh, Moscow. <clears throat> Le Corbusier traveled to Moscow in, uh, at the end of the 1920s and Moscow symbolized somehow um, the socialist idea of new um, uh, ways of uh, living together of many people. So somehow um, the, um, the examination of socialism and his slight interest in socialism shaped his idea uh, which later um, evolved in the Unité d'Habitation where many people should live together in a very condensed space. So in this first section of the, of the exhibition we are showing for example a model of the Algier skyscraper, the Grazier Cartesien. We are showing a reconstruction of the, the Plan Voisin uh, that Le Corbusier designed for Paris in the 1920s. So uh, a rich variety of different um, exhibits which show this um, importance of the urban context uh, uh, for Le Corbusier's work.